these proceedings, there's a microphone over here near the red bleachers. We are going to need you to use that microphone. Um, I'm sure some of you have very loud voices, but with masks and hearing, it's just a lot easier if you can use this microphone. And I would also ask that you announce your name since it's difficult for us to identify people with masks on. The rules of procedure are, any voter shall have the right to be heard and no vote shall be taken until all persons who desire to be heard on the subject of the vote have been heard. All questions and statements shall be directed through the moderator and no person shall be heard until recognized by the moderator. The moderator will limit a voter to one opportunity to speak on any motion or amendment and limit the time to speak to two minutes. There shall be a main motion and a second on each question presented prior to the amendment and limit, uh, sorry, there should be a, uh, a main motion and a second on, on each question presented prior to any discussion or any of the motions. One amendment at a time shall be permitted to any main motion. No further amendment shall be entertained until disposal of the pending amendment. If an amendment is adopted, then the main motion is amended and further amendments to the motion as amended shall be in order. If there are none, then a vote shall be taken on the main motion as amended. The vote shall be taken, um, we're changing this a little bit for this evening. Normally we start with a voice vote. We are going to start with a hand vote. Um, again, due to masks and the difficulty of um, hearing. So the initial vote will be taken by hand. Um, a vote, uh, if a vote must be taken, uh, uh, a vote must be taken by a state. Hand vote, standing vote, or ballot vote as determined by the moderator, provided that the vote must be taken by ballot if a voter shall call for the same and the call is supported by one fifth of the voters present. Motions for a paper ballot may be made at any time up until the vote is called for. The conduct of the meeting is governed by the laws of the state of Rhode Island and the town of New Shoreham. Robert's rules and orders are used as a guide. All questions shall be decided by a majority of the voters present. Are there any questions? Before we start, I'd like to introduce everyone at our uh, front table here in case you're unfamiliar. We have Amy Land, our town treasurer. Marianne Crawford is our town manager. Stephen Marola, our town solicitor. Molly Fitzpatrick, town clerk. Town council members present are Martha Ball, council. Andre Goudreau, first warden. Mark Emanuel, Council, Sven Reason, Second Warden, and Keith Stover, Council. To chapter three of Title 45, we are hereby required to close at least seven days prior to the third day of May 18, 2021. Written notification in three or more public places in said town of New Shore, arriving identifying the only electors of the town of New Shore and qualified to vote upon any proposition to impose a tax or for the expenditure of money to assemble in the town meeting at the Black Island School in the central part of the town of New Shore on Monday, the 3rd of May, AD 2021, at 7 p.m., for the purpose of ordering the tax to be levied and assessed on the rental property of the town and the inhabitants thereof, for the payment of the town debts and interest, for the payment of the town's proportion to the state tax, for the support of schools, for the support and maintenance of the poor, for the building, repairing, and amending of highways, for the building, repairing, and amending of bridges. For the improvement of any manner being fit of any property belonging to the town, for all necessary charges and expenses, expenses whatsoever arriving in the town, whether incidental or not to the above, and also to consider the following. 
A motion would oh, sorry, I'm gonna have Doug, uh, Doug is the assistant moderator. And before we start, a motion would be in order to make the reading of the board in its entirety. Second. All in favor, if you raise your hand. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for being here. Uh, the motion would be in order to authorize the town treasurer of said town, person to Rhode Island General Wallace, Chapter 45 12 2, with the consent and approval of the town council to issue and refund from time to time bonds, or, bonds notes, or other evidences of indebtedness in the amount not to exceed $1,300,000 in order to finance the town's contribution to the acquisition. Outfitting and equipping of a ladder truck fire engine, the terms and conditions of such bonds, notes, or other evidence of indebtedness to be set by a resolution of the town council or by the town treasurer and the first ward in the absence of such a resolution. Or in the alternative, to finance such amount from reserve as determined by the town treasurer with the consent and approval of the town council. Move and Second, questions, discussion. Oh, sorry. Uh, Tom Andrew would like to uh, address this issue first. So, just to provide uh, the lesson here with some background regarding this particular item, the town is in need of purchasing a new ladder truck. Uh, the current ladder truck is a 1991 to 175 foot ladder truck. It is 30 years old and it does not meet NFDA mandates. Uh, there are numerous mechanical and other issues regarding this fire truck. Uh, the new ladder truck will be 25 feet longer than the old one and is a better reach for homes that are set back on the island. The rails of the new truck of Ohio, which is stable for the fire coils, it does have a larger pump. 200, 2,000, I'm sorry, 2,250 gallons per minute. Uh, pumping drum, stainless steel, 165 feet of round ladders as compared to 1590. And also more seating capacity for the fire fighting and more compartment spaces for the crew. So uh, this ladder truck will provide much more needed safety for our firefighters. Questions or discussion? As there are none, I will read the motion. We'll call it. Motion on the floor is to authorize the town treasurer of said town, person to Rhode Island General Law, Chapter 45 12 2, with the consent and approval of the town council to issue and refund from time to time bonds, notes, or other evidences of indebtedness. An amount not to exceed one million three hundred thousand dollars in order to finance the town's contribution to the acquisition, outfitting, and equipment of a ladder truck fire engine. The terms and conditions of such bonds, notes, or other evidences of indebtedness to be set by a resolution of the town council, by the town treasurer and the first ward in the absence of such a resolution. Or the alternative to finance such amounts from reserve as determined by the town treasurer with the consent and approval of the town council. Those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Okay, those opposed? Passes unanimously. The motion would be in order to authorize the town of New Shore pursuant to Chapter 45, 12-2 of the Rhode Island General Laws to issue and refund from time to time general obligation bonds and notes of other evidence of indebtedness in the amount not to exceed $2 million to finance operational expenses of the Block Island Housing Board pursuant to the terms, dictates, and conditions set forth in section 45-12-2. Is there a motion? Second. Any discussion? Any questions? 
Right, we will vote on the motion to authorize the town of New Shore pursuant to chapter 45-12-2 of the Rhode Island General Laws to issue and refund from time to time general obligation bonds and notes of other evidence of indebtedness in the amount not to exceed $2 million to finance operational expenses of the Rock Island Housing Board pursuant to the terms, dictates, and conditions set forth. In said section 45-12-2, all in favor, raise your hands. Any opposed? Motion passes. A motion to be in order to authorize the town treasurer to set town person to Rhode Island General Law 45-12-2 with the consent and approval of the town council. To issue a refund from time to time, bonds, notes, or other evidences of indebtedness, an amount not to exceed four million five hundred thousand dollars, in order to purchase a portion of Assessor's Plot 19, Lot 3, and a right of first refusal in and to a portion of Plot 19, Lot 3. Said purchase to be contingent upon the execution of a purchase and sale agreement within 30 days of this date. And further contingent upon a concurrent transfer of a conservation and recreation easement to the Block Island Land Trust over a portion of Plot 19, Lot 3. The terms and conditions of such bonds, notes, or other evidences of indebtedness to be set by a resolution of the Town Council or by the Town Treasurer and the First Warden in the absence of such a resolution. I have a motion. Moved and seconded. Uh, Mayor, town manager will introduce this item. So, um, let me provide you with some information regarding this particular warrant item. The current lot will be subdivided in three lot A to contain the overlook the building, lot B for the potential purchase by the town, lot Island uh, land trust, and lot Island conspiracy in the nature community. Lot B amounts to about 4.12 acres. 1.75 be allocated to the town and 2.37 be allocated to the land trust and town conservancy group. Total purchase price is 10.5 million, 4.5 million from the town, 1 million from the land trust, and 2 million from Lock Island Conservancy. The financial impact of this particular purchase is $137 cash increase annually for a property value at $1 million. The lot includes 124 feet of water frontage. The town's potential use of the property encompasses the hot and master infrastructure, including but not limited to hot and master's office, restroom and shower facilities, welcome facilities, docks and ramps, storage for kayaks, paddles, and other recreational amenities, and employee housing. The town will be free owner of the property with the conservation group having an easement over the property. A signed search and sales and purchase agreement includes language ensuring no objection from the current owner to the town working out in the, in the future, either on Lot B or the Ball O'Brien property. The purchase price includes the very first refusal over Lot A, the overlook parcel. Details of the first right of refusal. The parcel will not go up for sale for at least three years. The first refusal, the right of first refusal is exempt by the transfer of property to see to the case, wife, mother, children, and ears at law. And the sale of the property related to the sale of the valid pen. There is currently an appraisal uh, dated uh, July 2020 right to the sale of the Chamberlain property. The execution of the purchase and sale agreement is subject to an updated appraisal that is satisfactory to the town council. Questions in the sun? Uh, yeah, I think it's My name is Robert Gilson. My questions are <clears throat> the question I have concerning this the map that I have here doesn't show anything that you had mentioned as far as parcel A and parcel C. It's just 
just a flat map of 1903. Um, my concern is the town has a history of um, poor planning. The Ball O'Brien property was uh, an example of that. They had to push through, they had to get a grant to build a harvest facility, they buy the property, and over 20 years we fought and argued over it, and then come to find out the land isn't really suitable for what the town was proposing. Not only did the voters turn it down, the point, uh, zoning board denied a special use permit for them to build the facility. My concern is we're not doing our due diligence and we're rushing in and spending millions of dollars to benefit transient people that come here in the summer. I would like to see our community focus on planning. I spent 10 years on planning. We need a community plan where every one of us can be involved in how we want to spend our money and what services we are going to provide the tourists. I just, it infuriates me that we're pushed into, in the middle of a pandemic, you push through an $8 million broadband initiative, and not one, I was one of the only ones that voted against it. Because we need to take the time, do our due diligence, and have good plans. And we're not, you know, money's finite. We need to do proper planning so we don't end up 20 years fighting over something, and it cost us 10 times what it initially started out. I'm concerned, as a lot of elderly people on the island, the cost of living is enough. And then you keep adding on, and adding on, and on, and on. I've been here over 40 years, and I've learned, I make do with what I have. If I don't have it, I'll go out and work hard and get it. I don't expect the taxpayers to provide me with it. I'm sorry if I ran. Thank you, Thank you, Further discussion, questions? My name is Roy McQueen. Um, I would have to second most of what we just said. Um, I don't think we have done, I think we've referred to due diligence on this uh, purchase. And of all of our property is a good example of what happens when we don't do our due diligence. Um, we don't know really clearly what we're going to use this property for. We have ideas about harbor facilities and uh, visiting boat facilities and all. We don't know the cost of those things. We don't know the maintenance of those things. Uh, we don't know whether there is going to be any revenue generated by this or whether it's going to be all taxpayer funded. Um, these things need more time. They need more discussion. We need a clear, understandable proposition put to us about what this is all about. And I don't think we have had that. Um, I have to second the motion that we need planning in this town. We need to have a five-year, a 10-year plan so we have an objective. We can't move forward if we don't know where we're going. And we don't seem to, we seem to be last minute, tricky this, tricky that, and see if maybe it will come together. So, unfortunately, I cannot add my idea to this mission. Thank you. Thank you. We'll in the corner. The timing of this potential purchase is unfortunate. But who among us does not have something come up in our lives that causes us to put our plans and hopes and dreams on the back room? When we all came here, we knew that housing, medical, and senior services were lacking, but we came anyway. We have come a long way in the area, and more will be done in town. We came for the open spaces and quality of life, which is currently under threat. 
If we do not purchase this piece of property, it will be purchased by a developer who will use every square inch possible to maximize profits. More houses, more cars, more people, more stress on the rate salt pond, and more chipping away at our quality of life. 50 years ago, Rob Lewis had the foresight and courage to raise money to buy back rising profits in the market. It's impossible to drive by that area without being extremely grateful not to be looking out and see the houses. It was a lot of money at this time, but the result was pricing, and it was a gift to not just us, but the future generations. We have reaped rewards from numerous landowners in Highland County, Andy's way from the Star family, the Hegan Russell, the land we are sitting on right now in Canyon, the library from the Dodge family, and the park in front of the Harbor Church from the Ball family are just a few examples. We enjoy our trails and scenic vistas thanks to the hard work of members of the Conservancy and the Land Trust to protect and maintain the open space they obtain and fees and donations, all of which contribute to the lifestyle we are being accustomed to. We are now being asked to do our part. There are ways we can work to increase town revenue as we move ahead. For example, many resort towns require an annual certificate of occupancy for short term rents to secure the safety of visitors as well as the steady stream of revenue. But for now, $137 a year is one or two family dinner down, dinners that would be long forgotten. Instead, you can use that money to help ensure that generations will be able to have a key piece of land, free of development with greater access to the paid for time. A yes vote is a way to say thank you to the generous donations of land in the past and a chance to pay it forward. Thank you. Thank you. I can't see anybody behind me, man. Good evening. My name is Ed Hay. Uh, my friend Steve McQueen wrote a book. We encourage everybody to pick it up and do that. I read his book. Please get a little closer to the microphone. Sure. Thank you. Uh, disturbed by the overdevelopment of mainland waterfront properties that had been laid waste by the tidal waves of the 1938 Philippines. The island developed a protective, conservation-minded mentality. In 1971, a large tract of land known as Rodman's Hollow was sold to developers. Led by Captain John Robinson, Lewis, the same open space movement supported the Block Island Conservancy in the early 1970s. The Conservancy joined hands with the Nature Conservancy the town, the state, and federal government, allowing the town to purchase that Robin Island property, which became the cornerstone of the conservation movement. Over the years, many generous donors have contributed both land and funding so that today nearly 48% of the island land is dedicated open space. Those efforts resulted in Block Island being named one of the 10 last great places in the Western Hemisphere by the prestigious Nature Conservancy in 1991. Large lot zoning, the 3% real estate transfer tax, the final purchase of open space soon followed. Real estate values began to rise. The town council appointed a historic district commission to prevent the destruction of the historic hotels, stores, and other buildings that was happening on the mainland. Ordered up hotels such as the Surf, the Florida House, now the 1661 Inn, the Atlantic Inn, and the Manassee. Wrap it up, please. We'll revive and be open. Uh, I encourage everybody, I encourage everybody to uh, please vote in favor of this. It's a very important 
This is a this is a the last remaining waterfront commercial property. It has it's type three water, which will accommodate a, a dock at our choosing. Uh, wrap it up. Yes, thank you. Uh, last point: there's a uh, massive infrastructure plan that is being considered in Washington, and I believe it will result in billions of dollars coming into Rhode Island for projects such as the ones we could possibly do. Thank you. Thank you. Remind everyone, please try and keep the two minutes. Can you hear me okay? George Davis. I'm here tonight to stand in support of acquiring the overlooked property. For me, it's a question of several key overarching questions that kind of drive my thinking on this. And one of them is something that Ed mentioned a moment ago, and that's the water types in our new harbor. Some of you have a, a map or have seen the map that's in our harbor management depicting the different CRMC water types that we're restricted to and the uses that we have in each type. What you'll see, and if you have it, I have it here to look at it, you can't probably see it, but the vast majority of all our shoreline and our water is type one use. I'm reading from our harbor management plan, if I can get my readers on, I thought it would help me, I forgot I had to have a mask on when we talk up. From our plan, the construction of recreational boating facilities are all prohibited in type one waters. That's what makes this type three water and shoreline acquisition so important. Because in type three waters and shoreline, development is pretty robust. And the highest priority use of high tree waters and adjoining land areas within the town's jurisdiction are mooring areas, marinas, public launching ramps, and other facilities that support recreational boating and enhance public access to tidal waters. Now, the issue is that there's very little tidal, I mean, high tree land and waters in our new harbor. And certainly, almost all of it is under strict control and this property represents what's left and what's available to us at this time. I think it's extremely important for our development plans to acquire this type three property and anytime we have an opportunity to get type three water. I also have a couple of documents to show that docks can be uh, thumbs up. I'm sorry. Just, just wrap it up real quick. Well, I'm sorry. Please support acquisition of this. It's good for the island and good for the long-term health of the Great Salt Pond. Thank you. Thank you. Christopher Blaine, I'm here tonight to speak against this proposal for several reasons. I agree with Mr. Gilpin. It's time to start thinking about elderly people in this town. People are retired on fixed incomes because you're piling on debt in ways that are unsustainable for people who don't have a lot of money. And I want to, I'm retired now. I'm taking care of my mother. She's older than I am. This town doesn't exactly have a great track record with regards to doing due diligence. I'll give you two examples. Broadband and that wonderful electric cable, which now we hear is going to be buttoned up and we'll fix it in the fall. This didn't happen in there against it. They buried the cable properly. Happened on Block Island. They couldn't even fill the sleeve up, plug the sleeve to get to the floor. Another example is Thomas property at 
hate to say it, but the voters years ago approved money. What was ever done to it? I don't even think it's that sort of thing. And everybody can say what they want. 48% of this island is conserved right now. We've got an area here that's commercial, doesn't have to have zoning changes like affordable housing does. You, you've got certain parts of this island are going to be developed, and more people are coming. You're not going to stop it. If you think you are, you're crazy. More people, more cars, more traffic. You need to start thinking about saving property in places that are next to other open space property. Because I hate to say it, but if you look at the topography of that lot, I hate to think what would need to be done to build anything substantial on without completely reconfiguring it. There's just places you're going to have to write off. And I think the new Harvard commercial is one of them. So thank you for the time. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I'm Keith Lewis. Like many of you in the audience, I think the sale price is far too high. But don't blame the three organizations that are working on the problem. It's the seller who sets the price. I was a volunteer in conservation for almost 15 years. In the early days, there were many projects where the sale price was too high. But with a lot of soul searching, we bit the bullet and often did those acquisitions anyway. And a few years later, we were so glad that we did because prices had increased even further. I support this acquisition for three reasons. One, by increasing the public ownership at the periphery of the pond, it's increasing public access and the public's voice in the pond's protection. Two, the proposal will create an opportunity for much needed housing for town employees. Therefore, a rejection of this acquisition is a rejection of that housing. Three, Block Island's limited acreage is coveted by the financial resources of the man. If history is any guide, land prices will continue to rise. Conservation was hard, in my day, it's even harder now and will be even more so in the future. In supporting this acquisition, I should emphasize that I haven't been active in conservation for several years simply because I have tasks that I have to finish before I cook. <laughs> I have not been part of the discussions among the three organizations, therefore, my opinions are my own. Nevertheless, I have confidence, complete confidence in those groups, those three groups. One of the great things about this community is the constructive manner in which public-private partnerships have functioned over the years. That continues with the current leadership. Thank you so much. Thank you. open a space and the community's access to its natural resources. BIC is a partner in this acquisition along with the Nature Conservancy, the Land Trust, and the town for a number of reasons beyond the long term need for real harbors to zoom. We're a partner in this acquisition to help protect the Great Salt Pond. Acquiring this property protect the buffer zone around the pond, which is seeing increasing development. Runoff from storm drains, fertilized lawns, and gardens with pesticides threatens the health of the pond. 
by providing adequate vegetation on the perimeter of the pond will prevent pollution from entering the water. The property is commercially zoned, as you've heard, type three waters, which means it could be very densely developed. With as many as nine condominiums built upon it and a private marina on its waterfront, we need to protect the pond. Acquiring the overlook will connect conservation properties together. I heard somebody talk about it within isolation. But if you look on your maps, that acquiring this property connects the Ball O'Brien property with property owned by the Nature Conservancy. This further protects the habitat, wildlife in and around the pond. We are also a partner in this acquisition to ensure community access. The Great Salt Pond is 800 acres of open space used for public recreation. Property around the pond is becoming closed off and exclusive. Protection of this property means there will be permanent, comprehensive public access to this incredible resource. I'm proud to live in a community that comes together to accomplish big things like this, preserving and protecting our natural resources for future generations. As president of the BNC and a year round resident, I ask you to approve the taxpayer portion of this project and vote yes. Thank My name is Edward Bluefield, and uh, I live in a way the town wants to spend four million dollars. I had already owned or overseas the property right next door. I'm sure of all my family, and I don't speak to them at all, I say this, might be amenable to a change of use for part of the existing park. Did anybody ask or even look at the possibility? Council needs to do some due diligence before jumping into this thing with full faith. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. My name is Kevin Lakash, High Street. Um, no one's here to question the well intentions, the good intentions of the conservancy groups or the town council. The problem is that for this large amount of money, we're getting a ball of a can of worms. Um, there's all kinds of questions that are arising. If you read the proposed purchase and sale agreement, there's ifs and maybes, and if rare species are found. Um, Archaeological studies, it's a very sensitive area around the pond, as we've seen before. And here we were told we're going to have to spend a quarter of a million dollars to dig an archaeological trench through the dump. Can you imagine what we're going to have to do over there off at the, uh, at the property here at your chaplain? We're not buying the Overlook. The Overlook is a building next to it. And we're buying 1.75 acres. I'm not quite sure how we think we're going to fit all the activities we see we're going to fit there on that piece of property and still maintaining the sanctity of what the conservancy groups want us to do and want us to want that to be. One more thing is take a look at the uh, capital budget proposal that's that's in the uh, paperwork tonight. $8 million for public safety fire and rescue, $2.5 million for public safety complex, $350,000 for Old Harbor Visitor Center, $2 million for the transfer station facility, $1.5 million for the Coast Guard station, the current place at the Harbor Dock Lake Tower. $9 million, $9 million for the school renovations in 2023. These are proposals, but that's a lot of money we're going to have to spend for a lot of really good causes, things that the island really needs. And I'm not quite sure that with the, with the way this is written and the way we're rushing in with it, this is a good idea right now. Thank you. Thank you.
and Sam Kerr. Um, first off, I'd like to wish East Lewis for many, many, many years to complete those tasks. Uh, this is a legacy issue. Uh, towns and organizations don't often face a legacy issue like this. Um, as uh, previous speakers have alluded to, these issues come up rarely, and even more rarely do they come up perfectly. Uh, they are usually fraught with unknowns. Uh, there are opportunities that present themselves usually with uh, less than perfect timing, less than perfect um, circumstances. But by the virtue of being legacy issue, it means that you have to move or lose. And uh, personally, I think that this is a, an issue that we need to move on. We need to uh, come out and support of this. A lot of the reasons why we have been put forward some doubts have been put forward. Uh, personally, I don't think any of those doubts are insurmountable. I think that some of the questions that were raised about the acquisition of Bob Ryan are actually, are actually alleviated by the acquisition of this property because the two properties together contiguously solved some of those problems that presented work in Bob Ryan. Um, it enabled us to move forward. Towns, are not organizations like a commercial enterprise. We're not in for the short haul. We're not interested in buying something and improving it and flipping it over in 10 or 15 years. We're running it at a profit. Towns are to provide services and protection for the people of the town and the resources that they have for the next 100 years. Um, there are a lot of moves, as has been cited, in conservation that. Uh, have been made in this, in this town that echo back today. We can't even remember what we paid for. And the, and the question was that they were, the thing was that they were, uh, they were overpriced at the time. I, I, I urge a positive vote. Thank you. Thank you. My name is uh, Jim Hoothorn, and uh, my wife forced me to write these down to the end of Ramble because I was in the HR field. But um, when this issue first came up for me, it was sort of slammed up. I thought, wow, of course we ought to buy it. This is sort of a no brainer. Uh, so the things you heard talking about, how to clean water, and all the rest of that. I thought, that just makes a lot of sense. And uh, I'll talk to you about who our tax dollars. So I thought about it a little more, and now I'm sort of not sure. I think there are some arguments that can be effectively uh, made on both sides. For sure, if the conservancy group wanted to buy the property, that's not an issue. Uh, I've met some people in this room support the conservancy group with their own contribution. So that would be fine. I think. Why I'm sort of sitting on the fence with the issue is for a couple of reasons. Uh, there's no question that we need a new harbor facility in Salt Park. If you've ever been in the shack, um, you know that we need that. It's somewhat embarrassing, I think, as a, a voter myself, when you say to people, well, what you see, do I take a shower, go to the bathroom, let me tell you what you do. You get your dinghy, you go into the field beach, Walk a half mile down <coughs> into the town beach, and that's our uh, that's what we get to the 45 or 50 dollars. <coughs> but as I'm thinking about it, we already own that lot 19, <coughs> excuse me, a lot more than the Bobo Bryan property. So, my question is, why can that be a standard uh, arbor facility? I think it should. And secondly, maybe even this is more important to me. I can think many more uses for clauses that are uh, urgently in need of funding out here. 
Okay, uh, aging population, medical center, uh, expanding mental health issues, youth, et cetera. So I guess what I find unacceptable is we can't find $8,000 for a senior drive program, but in a matter of a few weeks, we can find $4.5 million to purchase this property. So the matter is, I'm just a little confused. I'm not quite sure you know, how to go on an issue. So thank you. I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Marty McMullen, and for those of you who don't know me, I'm on the and I wanted to talk about um, two of the concerns that have been raised more than once. The first is the questions around the model buying property. And it is true that the intent when that property was purchased was to provide an area for harbor facilities. But over the years, the community, the town, has decided to use that property to create a variety of recreational opportunities. There's a skateboard park, a playground, tennis courts, basketball courts, etc. And I think everyone will agree that that property is well used and is worthwhile investment. Um, however, given that heavy use, at this point it's more difficult to access the water from that property. The owner of the property, which abuts Fort Worth, will give us the opportunity to use both properties together to create harvest facilities. In other words, we can cross the border between the two. Um, and finally, on that property, the conservation easement that's being developed is very specific as to the uses for that property, and that will ensure that um, if it's the desire of those facilities, it will be there. The second question is on the um, question of whether we're paying too much. Uh, there's still others who make a point this is a legacy purchase. Um, 10 or 20 years from now, I don't think people will say that we pay too much money. Um, and we as a community have made these large purchases in the past. And since 2004, we've collectively, the conservation groups in the town, made $8 million to purchase the hard property to maintain that as open space for everyone to enjoy it forever. In 2010, the town spent $3.2 million to purchase 1.4 acres of land for the national, which is roughly equivalent per acre to the total price paid by the for the for the owner. The tax portion is about a million dollars an acre. So this, this purchase would be well worth it for the town of New Orleans and the Earth Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is David Lewis for the record. It is not realistic to rely on public private partnerships with commercial institutions of interest to deliver the needed facilities for the Holland Master's office and visiting building services. I would like to build upon a paragraph from Mark Ball's recent letter to the Black Island Times and use it to segue to an alternate thought. Referring to the acquisition plan of the Borough of Holland property, which included the never achieved hope to build a harbor facility, she writes, I quote, the harbor facility originally for that site never happened. It was ultimately much to the benefit of the whole community as the section both owned and controlled by the town, including the playground and park, has been developed over time with a huge success in the local law enforcement. End quote. My point is fine. In spite of the difficulty, in spite of the difficult reality, reality that a harmless facility was never built, how fortunate it is that the acquisition was completed. The community purchased control of the global property 
you're not sure the passage of time, the cycle of development goes in place with to have better use. Unfortunately, well, after that, in 2021, we had that play playground in the park. Because of it, we are a more viable community, and we're moving the public. And I bet two of us in the room, as artists have noted, can remember what we paid for. The takeaway is that the community should take advantage of every opportunity to acquire land for future public use. Even if the business for a home facility does not come to fruition this time, the community will own the land and it can be redeployed in another direction of the community's team. It all begins with owning the land and raise the voters to authorize this fund. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Henry Dupont, and uh, I support the acquisition of the Oro Black. And there's a number of reasons why, but one of them is we do an analysis of exactly what could be built on this lot by an unscrupulous developer. And it's a little scary. Although the commercial uh, allows for uh, Intense development on the land side, which includes small setbacks and um, a lot of lot footage. As um, Tori said, we could build nine condos on this lot. We could build a large hotel or a modern size hotel and a number of condominiums. And um, we could, because it's type three waters, in addition to that, we could build a sizable marina. Uh, the size of the marina depends on what the riparian rights are. But for example, if the large marina next door bought the slot, they could extend the marina by a third into this area and have an additional at least 100 boats there. Um, and there's very little we could do about it because it wouldn't be extending out into the fairway, which is a current issue that we have on. Would be extending laterally sideways. So um, I, I just wanted to say that uh, this is the very last available opportunity for the town to control the dusting with regard to the commercial area in the Great Salt Home. We'll be one of the few communities that doesn't have our own harvest facility, our own town dock, in one of the most beautiful harbors in uh, Southern London. So I urge everybody to uh, take advantage of this last chance and to uh, support the measure to uh, acquire this lot. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Cameron Green, I'm the town council member. Um, I'm a uh, resident at 72 West Side Road, the community of the proposed acquisition. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I spent a lot of time walking around on this, but the community is here, some of you do as well. Um, in my experience, it's definitely uh, the, the cool of trash down there, which is by far the worst I've seen in my diner. You know, uh, chalk that up to whatever you want. Um, but for all the other things uh, that happen, and if you want to put it on a marina, we'll say very much we will. He needs this opportunity, we'll put it on a marina with us. And uh, it's going to get a lot worse. And if the folks who love so much called Rachel Pond, it's going to be a very good thing. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Jim Hall. I'm the Chief Engineer for I know you can all be most people. I'm sorry, I don't know. Oh, I guess both of you. 
uh, okay, in any case, uh, there they are the spine. I don't know the um, I, I sort of like to think of this. I, I'm in favor of the project, but there are so many other things, a number of other things that should be considered. I'm not saying you should go forward, but I think we should go back to what we just talked about. A plan for capital investment in the future. And in particular, we have a need for senior housing. We have a need for rental housing. We have a need for education. Um, and so the only thing is we're not against the proposal. I think it's a good idea. I was actually involved in getting involved in part four. Okay. And that ball of Arnie Jones is very generous in selling it at a housing sale. Um, and it really would be used for a lot of things. Um, the only other uh, point we don't play is that there's a right of way between uh, the, the property property or on the property property that goes down to the water for the benefit of the salt pond settlement property. And that should be considered. In terms of plans for usage, because it can connect to a ball ground park. We could go down there and use that as a way to get to the water. So I'm not against it, like I said, but I just think that we should think of the future about planning. Thank you. And I wasn't sure what I was going to say today, but all this legacy talk is, is sort of nagging at me. And Sam Burns has been nagging at me since we said about last week's meeting. You know, what is our legacy? And this is a rare opportunity. And I want to assure you that the library and all of its staff work on your legacy every day. Every day. It's not a rare opportunity for us to work on the legacy of Block Island and what we want to leave behind. I'd like to look at the wall behind us, and is that the legacy we have for Black Island? Have you seen that wall? Is that rock mold behind that wall? I'd like it not to be the legacy where we left our seniors out in the cold without a senior center, where we left our teens out in the cold without a community center. I'd like it not to be the legacy where we didn't pay our town employees their full salaries last year. They're not going to be paid enough this year, and yet, so I'm asking, what's your commitment to us? If we commit this money to another legacy of Black Island, I want to be assured that everyone in this room also gets a commitment, that your health and well-being is also committed to. And that's not apparent in this year's budget. It's close. You may like it, you may like pieces of it, but it's not totally apparent. And yet, next year's budget will be impacted by this decision tonight. So think carefully, think hard. I would agree that everybody wants to save the land, but it comes at a high cost, and I'm not talking about that. Thank you. Thank you. Last call. I want to remind everyone in the lower end of the room that we have a health issue um, for state and town going and we'll keep the mask on. Thank you. Jessica Lilly, I just want to call for a paper ballot. You have a motion for a paper ballot. I will ask how many people want to second this. Uh, requires 20% to approve the call for a paper ballot. So those uh, are canvassers. Yes, I'm. You can after the paper ballot. So we're not voting. Okay, 
voting only to have a paper ballot or not, then you may. Sorry. Uh, yes, the canvassers who help count. Okay. All those in favor of the paper ballot, please raise your hand and keep them up. The motion for paper ballot passes. This will be decided by paper ballot. Uh, discussion is not over. We will continue until last call. Um, who at the council table wanted to speak? They can, she can use that or this thing. Yeah. Okay, uh, there's uh, just a few points I want to make here. Um, we've heard more than once, and nobody remembers so how much money we spent on things. We spent $621,000 for new to each. We contributed five hundred thousand dollars to Black Rock. We paid um, two point two for Bob O'Brien, and we did pay a lot of money for Hodge. We paid more than we first offered, but we paid less than their first kind of offer. That was a partnership. That was an honest partnership. That was a real partnership. We got all four groups in the room before we started. The town council did not have. Everyone else coming out from the freight train with a few months to go and having to ram this through in a year of COVID without a whole lot of information. And most importantly, a vote tonight against this is not a vote against damage to the space. The land trust has substantial just was created by open space. The town needs to put a lot more into it. Conservation, and that's one of the reasons the town people support our land trust to do this sort of thing. The town has so many projects before it right now. We're getting sidetracked with this, you know, top of legacy. We're getting the deal about it. You know, I've worked on a lot of conservation projects. I've had scan the game. I honestly challenge a lot of people to come up with the record I've got. And, um, I'm sorry, I lost my place. Oh, sugar. Oh, well, <laughs> that's, I guess, all I have to say tonight. And I do think that the private public partnership should be explored before we simply dismiss everything out of hand. I think it's far overdue that this town really try to work the business community to work with the Marine Zone Great Salt Pond, we may be able to get some really good, positive, long term results, not just in facilities the town can use, but in how everyone behaves. And it's not what we all really want. Thank you. Thank you so much, Keith Silver, Beacon Hill Road. Uh, I actually haven't been speaking for a minute ago. But, you know, I just want to say I spent a lot of time thinking about this project, um, listening to people, listening to the land trust, listening to conservation, listening to my colleagues, um, asking a lot of questions myself, reading uh, not as deep as history as Martha is, or really any of my colleagues. I'm certainly not as deep in the, in the history as uh, Keith Lewis, uh, David Lewis, some of the others who have spoken. But I do want to say apropos of our process 
that this actually is an honest partnership. Uh, and when you start throwing words around like, this isn't an honest partnership, I actually find that offensive. Um, everybody at the table, who was at the table through the discussions, was working in good faith on this. And I trust conservation, I trust the history of the island, I trust the people I work with, I trust the principals who are at the table, and I'm voting yes. Thank you. Ben Reese, only second warden. A couple of thoughts and reactions. Uh, first of all, I think everybody's comments were really spot on on both sides, and I appreciate that. First, it is a lot of money. No question. It is a lot of money. Second, I really compliment Robbie on pushing for better planning. And we have done that. We are hopefully getting there. Robbie was on planning for a long time. I think we all agree that planning is critical five, 10 years. Sometimes, and somebody talked about it earlier, we have to react. When a sale or a seller is offering something that we think is valuable, we have to react. However the planning is gone, we have to be able to uh, zig when the world zags. On this issue, I think about a couple of things. One, economic development. The pond is an engine, and we have not necessarily taken advantage of it. And yes, they are, you know, here they are transients, they are coming. But there are ways that we can do much better, I believe, to take care of that economic engine. Secondly, we've got aquaculture, whether it's kelp or it's oysters, and there's really no commercial place for them to work. Critically, and George Davis mentioned this, this is take free commercial waters. We can appropriately put a facility there that supports the economy, supports the island, and supports the resident needs to be able to get to the farm. I had a conversation the other day with somebody that, that actually challenged the council or challenged me and then said he wanted to challenge the council. And how do we make this facility, any kind of docking, a boat ramp, how do we make that sustainable? How do we really push for a green, economic, beneficial pr uh, process and make sure that anything we do on that land is a true bellwether and hallmark? I support this acquisition and I support the challenge that we can do better than any other town in making this land and potential facility, which is at extra cost, a bellwether and a, and a real hallmark for Buck Island. Thank you. Thank you. Moderators. Um, I would ask Molly not to stop my talk right now because I really want to point out from back of the room there how um, this island appreciates our first responders um, immensely. And I want to personally get up here and thank you in front of our community for all the work you do and what you continue to do. You guys are true rock star heroes, and I just want to thank you for that. Um, So about this uh, item on our agenda here tonight, um, I will say I'm not anti-conservation. Um, I'm a strong supporter of conservation. Um, but what we're looking at right now is not $4.5 million. We are looking to review, to, to see this harvest facility through. You're looking at $13 million. And to me, that's a big dollar amount. And uh, to, to realize that whole thing. now. What you have before you in this warrant are two things. You have needs in the community and you have luxuries and wants in this community. And I do at this time feel as though this is a luxury and a want because we, you know, we have to start, as Robbie said, planning for our future and what this community wants. This has come in at the last minute and sideswiped us. We have a critical housing issue. We're looking at look, trying to find just town employees but that, that initiative down there with the, with the Hunter Shack will fit maybe two or three Hunter's employees. Now, we had a lot of blowback when we built a, town, a house for the town manager. 
I personally heard that, I understand that, and we're looking further to that, but we have to secure housing for the town employees to make our function, uh, to our, our, our town function. And I plan on looking past that. I plan on trying to find initiatives that will give all the working class a house, uh, an apartment, or somewhere secure, so they do not have to keep moving every single fall and spring. Um, and, I, and I hear an initiative like this before you, when that goes before you, this is gonna take a lot of that up. Um, we sat here and we went through the budget process. We trimmed, as Jim says, $8,000 from certain, certain um, budgets. We cut, we cut first responders. We cut senior advisors. Um, you know, a lot of people, a lot of the seniors out here are just one fall away from the scallop shell. So, if, and that's scary, that's scary to me, that's scary to the elderly, and I think we really need to start focusing on the people that live here year round. The 1,040 people who are here in February, what does this benefit them? It does not benefit them anything, and it's a lot of money. So I say we start looking inward, we start coming up with things that actually benefit the people that make this island spin. And I don't see that this does this, and this is why I voted against it. This is why I voted against it this season. I thank you for your time, and I personally will continue to support um, conservation efforts. It's just this is not the year to do it, especially with a 5.9 increase in the overall budget. And then all the things we cut out of that to bring it down to that, we add four and a half million dollars for something that I don't see is going to benefit the year round working people of this community. And I thank you for your time. I like Keith, who's not really going to speak tonight, but I just want to make sure everyone stays focused on this particular issue. We can rant and rave about housing, lobby, Chris, I mean, we're contemporaries. I understand 100% what you're going through and everything, all the negative byproducts of that. I lived in in hallways, I lived in sheds, I lived in a garage until I became the luckiest guy in the world and got my I got. But imagine if I didn't buy that 25 years ago and was still kicking myself for not purchasing that. Block Island, decades ago, was highlighted and it's still highlighted today because of the way we've married the environment and the economy. We got to continue to do this, and I think with the acquisition of this property, we will. Robbie talked about transients dictating what we do out here. Remember, we're a tourist-based economy. That's how we that's how we survive for so many people. Also, one of my one of my jobs in the summer is driving a taxi, and when I'm in New Harbor and picking up people there. Unfortunately, they get more questions asked of them than they ask me. I want to know their likes, and more importantly, their dislikes. And they don't want a luxury facility. They'll come to Block Island regardless. This is their favorite place for the overwhelming majority of the people who get in my taxi. All they want is something keep them here because they feel this place is so magical regardless of the shortcomings they will continue to come we have to provide that the acquisition of this property will allow us to do that thank you i'll throw a short hand over here first and then next My name is Arlene Funny, and I'm a year-round resident, and as much as I hate to admit this, I'm a senior citizen. 
a whole stuff of boat on that. And I, I keep my boat on the morning and I keep my dinghy on the little beach that belongs to the town. But I have to park on what is now a very private property uh, to go to my boat. And I have to lug wooden oars to get to my dinghy. And they're very heavy, especially if you're a senior person. But I've also been on the Harbors Commission for many years, and I know how much we struggle to put a Harbors facility on Polo Brain. I'm now on the Historical District Committee Commission, and two projects have come before us. One is the Boat Basin, and the other one is Champlain. And both of them have totally shut out resident senior citizens from access to the water. Uh, you can get there, but at the new champions will park over the tennis courts to get to it. They only have four parking spots up at the top of the hill and no parking close to the wall. At, at both places, they've moved all the parking back towards the road. So what, what do I do with my arrows when I want to go to my boat? I don't know. I think if we have a facility that, that's for us, that, that is for the residents, and yeah, transient voters could use it and bring in some money. But that would be a very nice thing to have. Thank you. Any other discussion or questions? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And the thing I'm going to say is I'm not talking. The people that are talking to me open up their hearts. I love the harbor too, and I love concentration, and I love all the people that live here. We need people to live here. Where's Fox? Fox! Fox! Let me say this. Be curious. I need God and his baby! Yeah. Yeah. 
truly last call. The date is closed on this issue. I will explain the procedure for the paper ballot. Uh, everyone must stay in their seats uh, with their masks on. There could be no walking around. Um, we use the green ballot only. The green ballot is the only one that will be accepted and counted. The canvassers will come by you and you will put your ballot in their in the basket or you're just staying your seat free. So I will read the motion one more time as you fill out the ballot. And uh, any questions on the procedure? Motion on the floor is to authorize the town treasurer of said town person for Rhode Island General Law 45 12 2 to the consent and approval of the town council to issue a refund from time to time bonds, notes, or other evidences of indebtedness in amount not to exceed $4,500,000 in order to purchase a portion of assessor's plot 19 lot 3 and a right of first refusal in and to a portion of plot 19 lot 3. Said purchase to be contingent upon the execution of a purchase and sale agreement within 30 days of this date and further contingent upon the transfer of a conservation and recreation easement to the Block Island Land Trust over a portion of Plot 19, Lot 3. The terms and conditions of such bond, notes, or other evidences of indebtedness to be set by a resolution of the Town Council or by the Town Treasurer and the First Warden in the absence of such resolution. Please mark your ballots and the canvassers will pick them up. Hold them in the hat so nobody can see. Thank you. And then again, please stay seated. Thank you. Is there anyone who has a ballot that has not been collected yet? Please raise your hand. I see no hands going up. Well, the ballots are being counted. I just want to remind everybody to try and stay within the two minute limit. I felt that subject was so important for such a large amount of money on that people run over in two minutes somewhat. Uh, but please try and keep it two minutes. If you have a lot to say, uh, speak uh, appreciate appreciate all the comments. We have almost 200 people here tonight, and that's what we should have a financial capital. Thank you.
Just a reminder to everyone, if you're leaving, uh, please maintain any six-foot social distancing as required. Thank you.
We are ready to reconvene if anybody wants to come back in. Before I get the results, I want to thank everyone for their thoughtful, respectful, courteous comments. The way of financial town meeting should be held. And I thank everyone of you. The vote 115 to approve, 81 to reject. The election passes. <laughs> now the hard part starts. You got 30 days. Give it back to Molly. She's well rested. Okay, a motion would be in order to receive and act upon the town treasurer's report of the receipts and expenditures of said town for the fiscal year 2021. Is there a second? Amy, Amy's just going to say a short bit about this. Can everybody hear me? Um, so the treasurer's report, which is noted in the lower right-hand corner, looks like this, um, gives us a quick overview of the town financial position through March 31st of this year. And obviously, it's been a very unusual year financially with some strong revenue areas, particularly building permits and perk fees um, to offset some shortfall, shortfalls, especially in seasonal revenues, um, like the cottage and the US tax. But overall, we're currently projecting a small surplus. Um, most importantly, though, this very small surplus does not anticipate using our reserve funds, which have been planned for and budgeted for this year. Um, so despite an unusual and somewhat unpredictable year, the town remains financially resilient and in a much better position than we expected to be moving into this year 22. Um, but I'm happy to take any specific questions on the treasurer's support. Anyone else? Are there any questions on the treasurer's report? Okay, thank you. Um, Hi, Amy. That's a surplus of the current fiscal year we're in. So, <laughs> um, so we're looking at a very small surplus. So projecting right now 97.242, which is the year that we were in. Um, really, that's baseline is zero. So anything between 75 and 150 thousand dollars surplus is really managing your budget. Um, what's important is that we're not using, we didn't have to use the expanding $50,000 to purchase funds. Um, so, yes, all of those things are together. And so, would it be possible to pay the employees their full salaries? Are there any other questions? Here's the 
motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? I show the hands, please. Any opposed? This motion carries. The motion would be in order to receive and act upon the superintendent's report for the school district for the fiscal year 2021. Is there a second? Any questions on this item? I'm not seeing any hands, so if there's no discussion on this item, a motion has been made and seconded to receive an act on the superintendent's report for the school district for the fiscal year 2021. All in favor, please show the show of hands. Any opposed? I'm reaching Paris. Motion would be in order to receive and act upon the medical center report by the Black Island Health Services for the calendar year 2020. Any opposed? Is there a second? Motion carries. Motion would be in order to receive and act upon the medical center report by the Black Island Health Services. My only question is how come there's a quarter million dollar difference between the income from this last year to this year? So, you were representing the medical center here at the age of Alaska? Or do you mind coming over the microphone? Did you clarify the question of Washington County? I can give you the general Is that like I think it's going to be a to when we need because of the internet that we have seen in the past 12 months? I've been meeting for almost every day, so therefore, the revenue is going to be a little bit more than that. Uh, so the clarification would be the beginning of the second time I was doing it was 652,000 as compared to our 426,000. We went through a very rigorous process in the financial rigor in the teams over the last several months of all looking at the more conservative and our projections for this year compared to two years. If you notice also in the land, we had to go off a significant amount of debt debt. Before we have any to do, or we could do it on the back of that 62 probably under the original budget. So, therefore, when we get to the revenue, we have to go to the office and share our projections. Any other questions? Any other plans? Motion has been made and seconded to receive an act on the medical center report by the Black Island Health Services for the calendar year 2020. All in favor, please raise your hands. Are there any opposed? This item passes. Thank you, Molly. Motion would be in order to. Receive and act upon the Black Island Housing Board report for the fiscal year 2021. Moved in. Seconded. Any questions or discussion? If there is none, those in favor of receiving and acting upon the Black Island Housing Board report for the fiscal year. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, 
Those in favor of receiving action upon the lockdown housing board report for the fiscal year 2021, please raise your hand. Those opposed? Motion carried. Motion be in order to receive an action plan of lockdown and land trust report for the fiscal year 2021. Move in. Seconded. Questions or discussion? There is none. Uh, I call the motion to receive an action plan of lockdown and land trust report for the fiscal year 2021. Those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed? Motion carried. I have a turn the podium to Molly, who gave us a budget. Great, right, a motion would be in order to receive and act on an annual operating capital budget approved by the town council and presented by the town manager for the fiscal year 2022. For a second. All right. Okay, so begin before we begin with the administrative administration budget, I'm going to invite uh, the town manager to say a few words about the budget. It's great to be out here this evening at this financial town meeting to see some of the faces. I've been here for eight months now as a town manager. And it's been very interesting. This went on from what we learned during the pandemic. And um, now that we have the opportunity to tell us not to have to have met everyone uh, on the island. However, with that said, I, I am looking forward to when I will be able to meet you all um, when we continue our community through this current pandemic. Before I get into the budget details, I would like to thank um, Amy May for her ongoing dedication and work with the budget process. Um, also, and Amy would probably agree with me on this. We're not a team myself, although some folks think it may be. Um, when we set the budget process, we rely heavily on our department heads, not town department. Without our department heads and town department, as they present their budget, they are very diligent when they do that. And they come forward with very detailed budgets. And keep in mind that um, these folks are here to serve the people of Long Island. And, and I cannot thank them enough for all their dedication and hard work. Um, that they have provided during my short tenure here. As we wrap up fiscal 2021, we see a hopeful end to the pandemic and a start of a new chapter of what we all hope is back to normal. The fiscal 2022 budget offers a new chapter and positive changes for the town of Neutron. After many months of hard work, the Charter Review Commission proposed seven, seven charter amendments to the Town Council. After much deliberation, the Council approved and presented a number of proposed charter amendments to the voters. Except for one, all, men, all amendments introduced were approved. After many years of planning and research, the Broadband Committee will begin to see the results of their efforts starting this year. And I'm delighted to report fiscal 2022, we will see the completion of the broadband project. Residents and visitors have, who have access to internet, no matter where they live or work on the island, we will no longer hear, I am on the west side of the island and I've lost internet. I realized quickly in Park Southern job that one area that uh, should concern all of us is our technology infrastructure and systems. We lag behind and need to take a giant step to catch up, especially with the completion of the broadband project. The funding for technology has lacked compared to our main counterparts, especially in today's social demand and legal occupations around public safety. The proposed 2022 budget is a responsible first step in providing funding specifically to the police department. 
to streamline reporting and meet dimension requirements in real time. I've often said local government provides its elector with the unique and vital opportunity to participate. Soon we'll be looking to introduce a way to broadcast town council meetings and other board and committee meetings. This for 2022 personnel course to facilitate the personnel course to help facilitate the broadcast. In the last 12 months, the town first offices staff and others in addition to their full-time responsibilities, have done an excellent job of managing the broadcast and two and up phone calls of all town council meetings and boarding committee meetings. The team has worked magnificently to juggle these additional duties, but we need to fund additional half time, but we need to fund an additional half time person. Finally, as with all budgets, we cannot include all the continental budget requests in the proposed fiscal 2022 budget. This budget will begin to transform the process in managing and planning the island's growth in the future. We will continue to meet the current infrastructure needs of the island while providing long-term initiatives such as broadband, parking, increased government transparency, and true not and townwide technologies that will allow us to play, plan resources and govern in a more effective way in the future. The proposed operating budget for fiscal 2022 is $16,560,130, a $1,243,920 increase, and an 8.1 increase over last year. The proposed tax levy is also increasing by 5.9. Folks reflect a time that has grown very fast and many challenging directions I want to also, the regional proposed budget for the current fiscal year we're in, fiscal 21, originally included a 5% budget increase and was reduced to 2.3 due to the pandemic. A number of items in the budget that in that budget in 2021 were deferred and they are presented in the fiscal 2022 budget. As a reminder, under Rhode Island general laws, the town can only increase the tax levy by 4%. Anything above 4% requires approval from the state, approval by the affirmative vote of four fifths of the full town council and the majority of the electoral present at this financial town meeting. This budget will provide the expected town service and need at our school building body education need. It will afford us time to plan source and secure potential federal funding for additional market projects that will need to fund future growth. Change is inevitable. Probably Blood Island finds itself at a significant quality of those stress points due to the expansion of hotels, conditions of Airbnb, and rent of homes. We see ferry runs with more passengers and cars, more daily trucks, delivery trucks, more trips to restaurants and stores, and more oversized vehicles and entries on the road. We plan to profit. profit. I am confident we will shift our focus to face these new realities, no matter how difficult, and continue to maintain the current character in its incredible beauty. Okay. All right, before I begin administration, I'd like to um, say one more thank you that I forgot to add at the beginning of this meeting, just to thank Mark Sorkina for your audio, which is above par. <laughs> people outside have made a video with me and people inside, so this is a new experience. <laughs> All right, the first budget, um, a motion is in order to improve the uh, budget for the administration department in the amount of one million five hundred seventy-eight thousand three hundred ninety-three dollars. Is there a second? Does anyone have any questions about this budget or any comments? I just come up to my phone. Um, I realize 
maybe I didn't say my name the second time and now the third time. So I'm Kristen down at the High Street. Uh, my question is uh, about the public works director and the facilities manager and what that looks like for the future of public works and buildings on Block Island. Uh, it's our understanding that the public works position will be filled by the chief of police and that seems like two 40 an hour week jobs and I'm not sure how that's possible, especially while we're talking about building a new perverse facility and some of our buildings look like this. Um, and so I'm curious as to what those hours are, what those job duties are, how that flushes out and and I have concerns about those $105,000 worth of duties being removed from the town manager position without that being reflected in the town manager's salary. So those are questions and concerns I have about this particular section of the budget. Thank you. Uh, so, um, the appointment of the police chief and the police tactics is being handled by Matthew Morningham. Um, if anyone looks at um, Chief Morningham's resume that was included in our purpose, we'll see that he spent a lot of time, 24 years in the state police, and he has been involved in numerous projects from the beginning to the end. Um, his police chief job in the summer. We'll keep them busy with the police department and the budget. So we spend more time on public and the ACPW and facilities. As I requested from the council, the funding associated with uh, this position of ACPW will not be eliminated so that we can see over the next six to 12 months as to how we can to extend the time. The same holds true for the facility. Position uh, self by Cindy, who has retired. Um, I have some concerns about that position as part of the structure. Um, many times, man, acting as the facility is the director, but also we can't call what I missed if there was a problem with the toilet, if there was a problem with the freezer at the school. So we need to look at what kind of staff we need to best. So the people with black hair. Are there any questions? I'm not seeing any hands, so we have a, um, a motion and a second to approve the administration budget in on one million five hundred and seventy-eight thousand three hundred and ninety-two dollars. All in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposed? Motion carries. The motion would be in order to approve the finance budget in the amount of five hundred and fifty two thousand five hundred and fifty five dollars. Second. Somebody second. Thank you. Uh, Amy, it's going to say a few words. Sure. I just wanted to call your attention to um, the annual revaluation at $120,000. We'll be moving into um, a full revaluation, which is required to be nine years under state budget. And so that's um, not an anomaly or a one point but we're very nine years since um, the other students have followed after that. Um, so that is a little bit of Unusual. Are there any questions on this subject? All seeing no hands, there is a motion and a second to approve the finance budget in the amount of $552,555. All in favor, please raise your hands. Any opposed? This motion carries. The next budget is the fire rescue and emergency management. The motion would be in order to approve this budget in the amount of $349,081. Thank you. Any questions on this budget? 
I'm seeing no hands. There's a motion and a second to approve this uh, budget for the fire and rescue and emergency management in the amount of $349,081. All in favor, please raise your hands. Any opposed? This motion passes. The motion would be in order to approve the police budget in the amount of one million one hundred fifty-three thousand dollars six hundred and ninety-eight dollars. I'm gonna read that again. <laughs> one million one hundred fifty-three thousand dollars six hundred and ninety-eight. Um is there a motion? Okay, so I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Is there a second? Second. Any questions? Yes, come on up to my microphone. And so I'd just like to note that 
this is what I mean by detoxification. Um, I just said so. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments on this subject? Okay, seeing no hands, we have a motion and a second to approve the harbor budget in fee of six hundred and twenty-seven thousand four hundred and ten dollars. All in favor, please raise your hands. Any opposed? That motion carries. A motion would be in order to approve the building officials budget in the amount of two hundred and sixty-six thousand. $102. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions or comments on this subject? All right, seeing no hands, there is a motion and a second to approve the building officials' budget in the amount of $266,402. All in favor, please raise your hands. Any opposed? This motion carries. A motion would be in order to approve the recreation budget in the amount of four hundred and forty thousand five hundred and thirty-nine dollars. Thank you. Um, a motion has been made and seconded. Is there any conversation on this topic? No questions. I don't see any hands. A motion has been made and seconded. To approve the recreation budget in the amount of four hundred and forty thousand five hundred and thirty nine dollars. All in favor, please raise your hands. Any opposed? Please raise your hand. This motion carries. A motion would be in order to approve the library budget in the amount of five hundred and sixty thousand nine hundred and seven dollars. Thank you. Is there other any questions? Comments on the library. Oh, yes, come on up to the uh, microphone, please. Let me start with the only time the book that we have and just let the other body of this line. Is there someone who can answer that question? Uh, yeah, the, the, the book budget is just like to be uh, on it. Um, of course, we'd love to have more money for books. Uh, Amy always really knew me when I worked on a budget that. So she wants to fund library things that we do. So if I needed more money, I'm confident that you can ask about that. Uh, at this point, the book budget suffices. We have better students in this town who uh, there's also a, a, a friend of the Army Free Library. Um, oh no, it's not, it's a trustee fund uh, that also buys books. Uh, that, that's a money thing that's going on. So we have some access to some other money for books. Um, but I love it that they're thinking of us and worried about books. And I don't think books are getting more costly and we still buy them. So, uh, you know, we, we look forward to that increasing as well. Thank you. Are there any other questions on the library budget? Okay, seeing no hands, we have a motion and a second to approve the library budget. The amount of five hundred and sixty thousand nine hundred and seven dollars. All in favor, please raise your hands. Thank you. Any opposed? Please raise your hand. This motion carries. A motion would be in order to approve the GIS and Technology uh, Department in the amount of four hundred and twenty-four thousand dollars six hundred and eighty-five. Thank you. Is there any discussion on this budget? Uh, seeing no hands, there's a motion in the second in uh, place to approve the GIS and technology budget in the amount of $424,685. All in favor, please raise your hands. Thank you. Any opposed, please raise your hands. This motion carries. 
A motion would be in order to approve the project for the boards and commissions in the amount of $210,189. Is there any discussion or any questions on this topic? Okay, seeing no hands, there's a motion and a second on um, to approve the boards and commissions budget for the amount of $210,189 on the paper. Please raise your hand. Thank you. Any questions on this topic? Okay, seeing no hands, there's a motion and a second on a motion would be in order to approve the community support budget in the amount of seven hundred and sixty-four thousand four hundred ninety-four dollars. Is there anything, any questions or comments on this budget? Seeing no hands, there is a motion in the second on the table to approve the community support budget in the amount of seven hundred and sixty-four thousand four hundred and ninety-four dollars. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. Any opposed? This motion carries. A motion would be in order to approve the school budget, school support budget in the amount of $5,272,797. Is there anything Thank you. Are there any questions on this budget? Okay. Seeing no hands, there's a motion and a second to approve the school support budget in the amount of five million two hundred seventy-two thousand seven hundred ninety-seven dollars. All in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. Any opposed? Please raise your hand. This budget passes. A motion is in order to approve the capital tax budget in the amount of six hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars. Uh, thank you. Uh, Amy has something to say on this, and then anyone else who says you can join the microphone afterwards. Thank you. I just wanted to um, explain and contextualize about these non public numbers. Those are items that are being funded through the infrastructure fund, um, which has enabled us in the last few years to get some of these capital projects accomplished. Um, without relying on the taxes. Some of them are also very forward from the current year projects that likely will be implemented until next year and will support the technical budgeting plan. <laughs> we have to show them in the current year what we can, but also next year. Um, so it's not that the cost of those have doubt, it's just that the timing has been like this as well. Um, and so it's also then important to think forward about until year 23, and after that, we won't have any interest in going to the wire and taking these projects, and we'll have to be incorporating them back into our operating and operating budgets. I like everyone to take a look at this building. I mean, I'm embarrassed. We're obviously not spending our capital building well enough. We're not maintaining the building that we have, and we're continually planning to build other buildings that we can't maintain what we already have. We used to a disgrace. We obviously have water infiltration issues, but this doesn't fix itself. We need to start spending money on our building. Now, I've taken care of the Northwest for 30 years with almost no budget, hoping that someday the community will wake up and start funding their, their buildings. And that's a disgrace. I'm embarrassed. Mm -hmm. so, and, um, I'll let the folks in the room know a couple of things as it relates to the school building, and, and I hope we do get some, some renovations somewhere. As soon as I started here, I started working very 
very closely with the contract of the facilities and the course of what needs to be done with the facilities. But if you find the land upon the education, is that we are required to think of a considerable study of the letter of intent the I've been working uh, with the superintendent and work with the building committee, and we are uh, we submit a letter of intent, we submitted the stage one, and we're now working on a stage two. With anticipation of approval sometime next year. And if you look at the capital budget, um, the long term capital improvement budget, in fiscal 2023, which is just a full time year from now, we did, um, we do have budget on six million dollars in the capital improvement, which some people have voted at the Washington, of $9 million. Of that $9 million, $6.6 million is for the replacement and upgrade of the district's school. school. And the second one is 2.4 million, 2.4 for the replacement of the gymnasium with the number of four floor address. So next year, we have more questions on the water and that we got from the school building. I say you have a facility study, so you have a good starting point. But stuff like this would be hard to fix. You got to find out where the water's getting in. And that's what's always been the issue with our community. We wait and do maintenance, it becomes a capital project instead of maintenance. Maintenance is ongoing every day. It should have never gotten like this. That, that's my point. You know, if you wait until it's a crisis and then it's millions of dollars instead of property maintaining the buildings in the first place. I mean, you see that here on Fruit Street. What's the first thing you see in spring? The owners come out, they open the building, they do the maintenance. The town doesn't have a plan like that. Not as long as I've been around. So it's not just about writing grants and going for bonds and stuff. We need a maintenance person. And I thought when I was on a plane, we pushed for a facilities manager. And I, was, I pushed for it and we got someone, but we never gave him the money so he could actually do his job. You know, we don't need a public works director. We need what we have, a facilities manager, and give him the money so he can properly maintain our building. And Mary, I'm not all blue. This, I've been involved in this community for over three years, and it's the same. And I just, and it's not all about flowing money on. Thank you. Are there any other comments on this? Okay, not seeing any hands. Um, there is a motion and a second uh, um, to approve the capital tax. In the amount of six hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars. All in favor, please raise your hands. Thank you. Any opposed? Please raise your hand. And this budget passes. A motion be in order to approve. Debt service made on $701,658. Any discussion on or questions on this thing? Not seeing any hands. Oh, sorry. Mana. I can look off. I'm sorry, Mr. Greater. I'm going to discuss this. We just briefly touched on the broad band CAI. We're going to look at 58,088. Okay. 
Sure. So that is um, the coming online of the cost related to connecting um, federal, school, library, and center, public safety, and some of the ancillary components. That was um, completed weekly months ago. And so if you recall that project was six hundred seventy-five thousand dollars with the cost to the taxpayer is about hundred fifty thousand. And that's not really coming on with the cost today, even though the now is not. Are there any other questions on this one? Okay, we can not see any hands. We have a um, motion and a second to approve the debt service budget for $2,701,658 on the paper. Please raise your hands. Thank you. Any opposed? Please raise your hands. This budget carries. So we have a motion and a second to receive an act upon the annual operating and capital budget approved by the town council and presented by the town manager for the fiscal year 2022. All in favor of approving this budget, please raise your hand. Thank you. Any opposed? Thank you very much. Now it's time to, excuse me, meeting after the resolution purpose for writing home law 44-5-8 concerning the writing of I will read the whole thing before we ask for a motion. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Resolved. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Resolved that the electors of the town of Shoreham qualified to vote upon any proposition to impose a tax over the expenditure of the money of town of the community center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That the assessment and collection tax be made on the rateable real estate and tangible personal property of said town. The fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2021, to June 30th, 2022, and the sum of up to $11,408,101. That tax for expenses and charges and sinking funds for the payment of interest and indebtedness in the whole or in part of said town and for other purposes authorized by the law. That said, tax includes two hundred four thousand seven hundred sixty-six dollars in excess on the four percent property tax cap authorized by the Rhode Island Rule Forty-Four Dash Five Dash Two, certified by the Rhode Island of Revenue Division of Municipal Finance in accordance with Rhode Island Rule Forty-Four Dash Five Dash Two, parentheses D, parentheses three. The tax assessor shall assess and enforce the said tax on the inhabitants of rateable property of said town. As of the 31st day of December, AD 2020, midnight, according to law, and shall on completion of said assessment, they can certify and sign their name and deliver and do and deposit the same in the office of the town clerk. A receipt of said assessment shall forthwith make a copy of the same and deliver to the town treasurer. We shall forthwith issue a fixed set copy of the law in her hand, directed to the collector of taxes of said town, demanding her to receive and collect said tax from the person. Set tax shall be due in table one between the 15th day of August 18, 2021, and the 31st day of August 18, 2021. And all taxes remaining on today on said last noon day shall carry into the record a penalty to rate up to 18% per annum on such unpaid tax, and or set tax may be paid in quarterly installments. The first installment of 25%. On or before the 15th day of August 2021, the remaining installments as follows 25% on the 15th day of November AD 2021, and 25% on the 15th day of February AD 2022, 25% on the 15th day of May AD 2022. If the first installment or any succeeding installment of taxes is not paid by the end of the grace period, establish the equivalent installment, set grace period. End dates here established as August 31st, 2021, November 30th, 2021, February 28th, 2022, and May 31st, 2022, respectively, which shall carry until collected as a rate of 18% per 
for Anna, including the grace period. The wife, however, in these options do not do an amount, excuse me, not in excess of $100 to be paid in full between the 15th day of August and 31st day of August 2021. And the full installment provision here and before committed shall not apply. And be further resolved that the collective package shall collectively be the account further as the same collective day, the tax that they ordered. This is a true copy of the resolution passed by vote. But this will be a true copy of the resolution passed by vote elected at the town of Stone, the Commission's now meeting in the third, 2021. The owners of the tax is now closed. Vote should be in order to approve this resolution. Moved in. Seconded. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed? Thank you. Motion passes. I should send this to an English teacher sometime. Run one more sentence. Motion would be in order to resolve that the town tre uh, treasurer is hereby authorized with the consent and approval of the town council by resolution to borrow from time to time and have anticipation of taxes. Each sum or sums of money it shall be necessary for the payment of the current liabilities and expenses of the town, and to issue the negotiable promissory note or notes of the town who therefore. The total amount of notes issued shall not exceed the limits prescribed by the section 45-12-4 of the general laws as amended. Sums so borrowed during the current fiscal year commencing July 1st, 2020. And ending June 30th, 2021, shall be borrowed in anticipation of taxes assessed as of December 31st, 2019, and some so borrowed during the subsequent fiscal year, but prior to the next annual financial town meeting, shall be borrowed in anticipation of taxes assessed as of December 31st, 2020. Those notes issued pursuant to this authority shall be signed by the town treasurer and countersigned by the first board of the town council. And such counter signature shall be conclusive evidence to all holders of such notes that the consent and approval of the town council to loan evidence thereby all terms and conditions of such notes and the methods of sale thereof not fixed herein or by provisions of law may be fixed by the town council. The town treasurer is hereby authorized with the consent and approval of the town council to renew such notes from time to time. But any such renewal notes shall be due not later than one year from the date of the original notes so renewed. Is there a motion? Okay, and a second? Any questions about that? All in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Motion to be in order to authorize the town treasurer to attend the second approval of the town council to place investments as being proper to open or close bank accounts as necessary for the general fund, enterprise fund, and proprietary funds to set down consistent with any investment policy adopted by the town. Move in. Second. Any questions or discussion? Those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed? Motion carried. Motion to be in order to authorize the town treasurer to sit down with the consent and approval of the town council to issue refunding bonds in order to refund all or part of any public approval of general obligation bonds that would result in savings to the town. Length of term of said bonds to be the minimum required, the same or less than the time duration, and terms, details, and conditions of such bonds to be set by a resolution of the town council. Move to second it. Any questions? Motion in favor, please raise your hand. Motion opposed. Motion carried. Back to the Motion is in order to authorize the town, town director with the consent and approval of the town council by resolution and the board of steward commissioners pursuant to the Lincoln Law 45 423. The issue notes is in anticipation of steward service charges, some or sums of money 
to an amount which, together with any money borrowed from the dissipation of such revenues in any fiscal year that remains unpaid shall not exceed the average of 80% of the total amount of those revenues due or expected to be received during the fiscal year, as estimated by the town treasurer for $400,000, whichever is less. Such funds shall be used for the payment of the current liabilities and expenses of the sewer commission, for the cost of repairing and operation of such sewer disposal system. Negotiable notes issued pursuant to the authority hereof shall be signed by the town treasurer and countersigned by the first warden of the town council and the chairman of the board of sewer commissioners for the loan or loans evidenced thereby. All the conditions of said note or notes and the method of sale. Thereof not fixed herein, or the provisions of law may be fixed by the sale thereof. Not fixed herein, or the provisions of law may be fixed. Sorry. By the town council, and if not so fixed, then by the town treasurer. The town treasurer is hereby authorized and empowered with the consent and approval of the town council and the board of sewer commissioners to renew any such notes from. Time to time, provided that the period from the date of the original note to the maturity of, of any note issued in the new same debt shall not exceed one year. Thank you. Second. Is there any discussion on this? All those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Thank you, Ms. Presser. Thank you. Most will be in order to authorize the town treasurer with consent and approval of the town council. A resolution of person to allow in general law 45 as 12 as 4.3 to issue notes in anticipation of water service charge. Such sum of sums of money to an amount of which, together with any money borrowed in anticipation of such revenues in any prior fiscal year that remains unpaid, will not exceed the matter that gave the total amount of those revenues due or expected to be received. For any fiscal year, I estimated on the town treasurer for $100,000 or whatever is less. Such funds shall be used to paint the current liabilities and expenses for the cost of repair and operation of such water treatment systems. Negotiable notes issued to persons with authority hereof shall be signed by the town treasurer and shall be signed by the first warden of the town council in long or low evidence of bond. All the conditions of said note or notes and the method of sale thereof not fixed therein. By provisions of law, will be fixed by the town council, and if not so fixed, led by the town treasurer. The town treasurer is hereby authorized and empowered with consent and approval of the town council to remove any such notes from time to time, provided that the period from the date of the original note to the maturity of any note issued to remove the same debt shall not exceed one year. Mm -hmm. Move the second. Any questions? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Motion passes. Motion passes. Thank you. Motion would be in order to authorize the town council to show the general law, Rhode Island general law, 20 3 7 to enact such ordinances as they can be safety proper, to protect and regulate the keeping of shockers and other things in the great small pond, and to impose penalties, therefore not exceeding $200 and three months imprisonment for any one of Thank you. Any questions? All in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? This passes. A motion would be in order to ratify and confirm the actions of the town council in authorizing over expenditures of certain appropriations, which were due to circumstances that could not be anticipated in budget preparations for fiscal year 2021, provided that the over expenditure did not exceed the total amount. For the fiscal year 2021. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? This passes. A motion would be in order to authorize the town council of the town of New Shore to extend grant funds applied for and awarded to the town of New Shore and to the extent grant proceeds. Proceeds from grants exceed the amount budgeted by the town to authorize the town treasurer with the advice and consent of the town council to expend these excess proceeds for the purposes designated in the grant. Thank you. Any questions? All in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? 
this past tense. And for any and all other purposes authorized by law and transact such other business as may be able to come before the meeting, is there any other business to come before this meeting? Uh, if not, a motion to adjourn would be in order. All in favor? Any opposed? Um, before you all leave, I just want to um, say thank you to our board of canvassers, to the staff at the town hall, Nurse Rafina, um, and the staff at the Rock Island School for their helping set this up and make it possible. Thank you all for coming. And anyone who would like to help us break down chairs, that would be lovely.